Normally favoured by Tai Lu, but look, they're hoping that with new changes, new lineups brings new opportunities, and they're looking to take down maps. Yeah, and well, new lineup, sort of. It's it's most of the old lineup, so it's only a few of the new elements, but we will be jumping into that map. It'll be interesting to see who won the knife round, because you mentioned Tai Lu. If they send that T side, it's going to be a tough journey for them, and oh, oh no. that's exactly where they find themselves. That's a lot of util, though. Double flash. Obviously, Kaze has dropped that over towards Jamyoung. And Jamyoung has been a fantastic player for this team. If there's one saving grace for Tai Lu, it's Jamyoung. We have to see it from him. Immediately, players, they spread out over towards B. Yinfat Exertion with the pistols, a very common setup, just waiting patiently. Yimmy to take first contact. Yeah, no counter flashes. Okay, oh. never mind. USB shot to open up the account. Now the flashbangs come through over the top of the T side. It's actually not even needed yet. Finally does activate, takes the gush, but still finds another kill, or at least Jimmy does, and it is a lockdown. No one even making it out of the monster pipe. That's so brutal. Jimmy, first bullet fired in this game, an immediate headshot. There's a, a double barrel set up as well, so even if he falls, there's still layering from Maus. It makes it so uncomfy for Tai Lu, and all of this utility, and the first peak is dry. Mercury just goes straight into the guillotine. And from there, Zerjan's just baited in perfectly with the dualies. Chewy swings. Very simple from Mouse. It's crazy Tyler were full for this. <laughs> and they're just going for another monster pop. This is insane. It's insane. Chewie can't quite get the second. A lot of damage done, but they've got the weaponry advantage. And they're managing to lock this out. Zerjan steps in for two. Brolin with his. And you'd be maybe scratching your head thinking, was this a full spy? Because it didn't feel like it. It didn't. Uh, it didn't at all. But look, Tai Lu, there's uh, apparent methods to their madness, but not in this one. Uh, at least the flashbangs were there slightly earlier. They were able to overwhelm Chewie, but it still came down to a trade. And then Exertion immediately just passing the test with flying colors. Kaze is now just hoping someone from Maus gets uh, a little bit excited and overstays their welcome to the point where he can actually drop a smoke, maybe line some up with the Tech 9, not to be. Roland locks it in, Mouse keep it comfy, and back-to-back -back rounds of investment, no bomb plant. Surely this one's a save if you're Ty Lu. Yeah, it had better be. I've then spotted a flashbang, we've got Glux. A bit more normal from Ty Lu. Let's see, Shui gets that first kill, but the flashbang was perfect, so that was something. But nothing really to help them scale. Mercury had the right ideas, but Zershin playing around the pillar was in the perfect spot just to swing wide, find his kills. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Let's go. Once more under the breach, dear friends. Well, single flashbang to support. There it goes. Over the top is actually a pretty good flash, and it's going to overwhelm Jimmy. Zershin is still present, and the rotations will arrive. With just the Glocks have actually done better than the round previous, it feels. Especially with a second kill coming through, but there's even a flank coming through from Shu8. Advent with the collected FAMAS. Has a free berth up to A if he wishes to, to run there, but the rotation will beat him. He's thinking about it, isn't he? I mean, he, he knows that Shui was, was on the flank, so there's potentially an avenue in which he can find himself. And so he's going to meander down long, tuck himself into the corner, hoping once again that Mouse players overextend. Brolin might give him the courtesy. Just waiting patiently. Two players have rotated up because of all the space that the MP9s found on B. 40 seconds. Advent's trying to make them doubt, but instead it only makes their belief a lot more stronger. Around the corner he goes. Brolin gets the jiggle. Doesn't need to face. We'll wait for exertion. They're going to double swing and Advent's going to be overwhelmed. That's free locked in for Maus. Well, I found two kills. So that's something for Tyler. There's B site proving to be... Difficult to breach through, even though they've actually been doing well with the flashbangs in terms of actually catching off this initial player. It's each round they managed to find that first kill. Torji only good for one before he got glocked. But now he gets the AWP out. And Tai Lu will have their AKs in hand, and this time they're not going 5B. Yeah, instead, trying to maybe face the wrath of Torji's AWP. 
Just throws a nade, doesn't peek, doesn't commit. Felt like he might have even gone down connector. Instead, it's Tyloo that are met with the spam. Short control already established for Maus as well. It's very dominant. Even if the audio queue is given over by Yimfa, it's Exertion that steps in with the MP9. Further spam gives away more information to this mouse side. Exertion is just popping off. He's having no issues. Oh, Jam Young. Pushing through the smoke. Maybe. With the support rotating over, Torchy's aware of this gap. Should we step in? Jam Young might be called off. No. Torchy, not ready for Jam Young to be just on that slither angle. So that's presented an opening, and now the rest of the team is going to join up in long. Shuei steps forward, trying to at least eliminate this single threat. He needs support. It starts to rotate up now. And that flash, that kind of gives away everything. Uh, and the ghost for Tai Lu. It's not just one player lurking in toilets. It's the whole squad. You see Brolan just jumping for information. Shuhei actually trying to close the gap on toilets. So reroutes in towards connector. Brolin goes ahead of the utility, but only goes one for one. But it's trying to set up Shuhei in the power play. But once again, Jam Young denies. A three on two, the best chance Tyloo have got of winning a round in a minute. It looks really good. Bond to be planted, safe from the flank, which is exactly where Mal's are coming from. Zershan look ready to bail. And I think, yeah, they're calling this off. So Tyloo will get on the board and it comes at the back of Jam Young, catching that alert, timing on Torji. And then playing disciplined, waiting for the moment when the aggression comes through long that he can swing out and catch Shuei. That's the critical kill. If Shuei stays alive or finds the kill under Jam Young, completely different round. Jam Young mentioned he's been the kind of shining light for this squad. And he's the one that leads them to their first round in this map. Yeah, needed it, didn't they? Because it really looked like they were throwing a lot of problems, you know, trying to create a solution over a monster. They just kept repeating it, repeating it, and repeating it. This time it did start with a little bit more attention over towards connector, over towards taking the toilet space, a much more default round, and that spread resources are a lot thinner for this mouse side, even with the amount of control that they had, even with the exertion finding this opener. Torji simply caught off guard, but th they're the plays you can only make once or twice a half. Now Maus are going to be well aware. Tai Lu are more than happy to take liberties and take risks in order to try and sacrifice map control. Yeah, they'll be feeling emboldened after to find success on A on their first attempt, kind of broaching that side of the map after the first three rounds. We're just running at the wall in Monster. Despite the 3 0 start, Mao's are in a, a position where they can be reset early, and that can be devastating on the CT side. Toshi gets the orb back out. Now that one AK kept on desertion, he's earned it, that's for sure. It's a good time for that pause as well. You just get Cycron on the mic and he just says, look, be aware that Tai Lu will try and disrupt the default. They will go for risky plays, trying to completely offset what you typically expect. That's the that's the path for Tai Lu to carve out options to gain rounds. And if the money gets reset for Mao, suddenly you're feeling a little bit compromised as to a position that you were originally in, where the first three rounds were such a success story. Back to B. For Tai Lu, Kaze wields the scope, tries to find options and openings, but doesn't see anything. Instead, another smoke gets thrown his way, a fake flash from Exertion, just to announce some arrival of presence on B. In fact, he takes it himself in short. They're committing to this. Exertion pops in, doesn't see anything. But all the bodies save for Advent. He's trying to provide a bit of distraction over at A just to keep interest over there. And it's enough. It's brought Chewie over. Zershin gonna be jiggling, but they're gonna be ahead of the smoke. Gonna be launching through. Zershin needs to step up. He falls. Jim Fat, only good for the one. Mercury has entered into the site with a bang. Smoke misses onto heaven. That's unfortunate, but the bomb's still to be planted. Oh, what a tap for Mercury. Four in the round. He is absolutely on a tear. Yeah, did the smoke miss or was it all intentional? Just hit some pop heads. Uh, it, it did miss, but it doesn't matter. What a round from Mercury. Isn't. Flashes are really good out of Tai Lu as well. Mercury wants the full house. Chasing Brolin down. I just find it. I'll save the orb. That's a very tight angle. Mercury definitely going to be swinging onto this, no? The hunt's coming from above. Brolin is not going to be surviving this. Jam Young will lock him in. If not, well, maybe. 
Maybe he can get away with this. 40 HP, Jam Young looking, goes the wrong way. So Brolin just manages to hold on to the AWP. A small save for Malz after Mercury just demolished them on B. Yeah, I mean, this is just Malz just losing their gunfights. One by one, all the hands of one man. These shots on towards heaven are disgusting. The fact he's able to adjust and... Oh. A second one. Insane. See you later. Already seen some really good like mechanical ability on display here in Chengdu and... Tai Lu, they win the round, they then immediately call a pause. They think, okay, what has Mao saved into this round? Well, it's the AWP. What are they going to bring, bring him forward off the back of it? Well, not a lot. It, but it's rounds like this that Mao's sort of get the best from. Limited weaponry, making a nuisance of themselves. That's where Tai Lu need to be careful, not trip over their own shoelaces, so to speak. These are the rounds that matter the most, especially in BO1 MR12 format. You can't afford to be fumble in the bag. So what's his ult? And a couple of pistols. That's what we're looking towards. Maybe he's going to get boosted up. He's calling for it. I think actually we had other ideas at the initial outset. But orbs up on over. Tyloo know that this was saved. They're just grouping. The whole five-man squad towards A. Pushing out towards long. Zershin's going to have a lot of players on his hands. What's out the first? Deagle not quite connecting. Flashbang forward. He's being run down. Still manages to skirt away for a moment. Advent will eventually catch him. But Torchy's rotated. The orb revealed and a kill found. You can see they're immediately running away. And so's Torji, off on his bike. They're being dynamic here, Maus. They're trying to gamble over to a bomb site, but where Tai Lu just take a moment to breathe. It looks like they were scurrying away on the death cam. In fact, they're just regrouping, collecting their thoughts and collecting themselves. Jam Young clears long. Everyone else is in toilets. They're trying to completely avoid this orb. But where Maus don't see anything, in towards short, they're going to have to rotate, but it doesn't look like they'll be there in time. See, already one player has gone up, but... Tyler committing into A. It's just Shui, who's actually behind this smoke. So that one's gone maybe a little bit awry. He's got a pocket that he can hang out in. Torch all comes up. Oh, nice flick up, but it's just a leg shot. Roland's down all from his own, and he's doing damage with it. But it's 2v3 with two orps. You kind of feel like you're just going to be saving onto these weapons. Roland actually wants a rifle. He's able to pick up that AK. So at the end of the day, two kills, and they hold onto the AK and all. They'll be okay with that. Yeah, good round out of Tyloo. Uh, and yet again, it's another player coming up with a multi kill. It was Jam Young to kick off proceedings, and it was Mercury with that spectacular 4K over at B. Now Advent, sure, it's against the Eco. Sure, it's only against one AWP that was saved, but it's still meaningful. These rounds matter a lot, especially T-side overpass, where Tyler have already acquired three rounds of play. 50% converted. And that, this was after them looking a little bit one-dimensional to kick off the map. Guns will come back out for Mouse and... Maybe a philosophy change as well. They've been prioritizing a lot of control over towards short water. Maybe it's time to fight long. Maybe it's time to go in towards party and playground because there hasn't been much pressure just over there whatsoever from Mouse. Yeah, it's a very B-focus. Uh, Brolin's gone for like an initial peak towards Fatten where he got flashback, I think, in the first gun round. But outside of that, it's been very much over towards B where the control's been taken. Nothing even in connector either. Tyloo aren't having issues getting this space early. This has been no conditioning, kind of forcing them off those lines and making them sit back and take their time clearing out A. Eh? They're able to, to set up early and towards bathrooms, out towards long, and that's giving Mouse some issue. It is. There, there needs to be a push from Mouse or just a setup in towards toilets, for example, because... Every time Tyloo find themselves up towards the top of the A bomb site, 
there's only sort of one player ready in support for Maus. There's never a, a team effort where they swing together. That only comes at the close when they've already got the player advantage. There's vulnerabilities here, and Tyloo can potentially exploit it, but they're back to their favorite pastime, trying to take B. Yeah, four mouse players over here. Gonna be difficult. Flames go for Jam Young, leading the charge this time. Torchy up on over. Good for one before he's traded, but Shuei steps in. And a lot of damage done on these initial players as they enter. Oh. Mercury is sitting in the smoke, catches Jim Fat there, bumping into each other. And Jim Fat just spams, knowing that Mercury had pushed through that smoke, denies the bomb. And that behold looks a whole lot better. Yeah, it, it does. And look, th this round. It is formulated by Tai Lu because after their recent endeavors over there, they were getting a little bit better each and every time. They know that Maus have just reinvested. So they're hoping that they do prioritize more control over towards A, like we were mentioning. Instead, they go for a B hit. They expect to try and overwhelm, but there's just too many players to deal with. The counter utility was perfect as well from Maus. It just allows Jimmy free real estate just to play ahead of these smokes. Tuck in behind them. And now here's that setup. And notice how Mauser are playing always with a very big lean. This time it's four players towards A. Exertion leads with the name. He's able to get a kill, but not before he's traded out. That's fast one from Kaze. Can't push any further because there's still three players to Mauser on the top side. Jam Young gonna spot one at Fountain. He's gonna fall back, so B is heavily open. Jimpat's going to fall back towards a more passive position. This smoking towards monsters. Not really going to do anything to negate this attack. Almost the timing on the swing, but they've gotten full control. Torchy over the top at a moment where he had sight lines. That's denied. And Shuei falls. Gives the advantage to Tai Lu as the bomb gets planted. Oh, and that gets extended further. Nice shot from Kaze. This could be difficult. You've killed so many players over towards CT that... You should be anticipating that monster flank. What a shot from Jam Young. Roland sent six feet under, and now Jimmy sent scampering. Feels lost without control. Feels like he can't actually retreat from his position, so has to stand his ground in order to save the AK. We'll grab one, and that makes the escape path. Even upgrades to the AWP. He'll get out alive with the sniper, but Tyloo get out with the round. Another B hit being a success story. It's another player stepping out with a multi-kill. This time it's Kaze, who... Yeah, he's kind of, a, again, a player that's been under a little bit of criticism in the squad, and it felt like, you know, he was being benched. He was out, but you know what, Tyler? i got to apologize. I wasn't familiar with your game. Maybe six-man rosters are the way. At least they're looking good early on on the T side of Overpass. What would you say? This is Tyler looking good, or Mal's a little bit slow to start? I think this is Mal's doing a lot of homework when it comes to their preparations and you can see that they are really relying a lot on their game plan rather than just playing what's in front of them in, in a lot of these rounds we've seen four man leans over towards b four man leans over towards a these heavy over rotations which are punishing them because they're so far forward and as a result, when you've got players that are losing their life in Connector, at the same time you've got players that are fighting towards Party and Fountain, it leaves B so vulnerable. And the rotations are so far away, you're putting a lot of impetus on these players on B, staying alive without too many resources. And it's worrying to see. I feel like they just need to play their own game. It feels like they're, they're trying to read too much into what Tyloo are doing. And I'll be honest, I don't think Tyloo even know what they're doing half the time. Well, this round they're taking short control, that's for certain. This orb continues to stay present on the male side. No Torji hasn't quite found the multi he's been looking for. A boost. See, there was a consideration for a moment from Jimfad and Petiar tries to find the space out, but he gets spammed down by Zershin. Jimfad said to finish the job. Shuei jump spots. A reassembly of the boost. God, they want to find this kill so badly that it's just uh, eluding them. And meanwhile, Zershin's pushing monster and might find himself the bomb. Depends. Does he want to push through this? Kaze was holding for a moment and he decides, no, going to step back, keep the advantage. I mean, what can you do here if you're high or low? You've got no space. The, the only essence of map control you have is in towards short, which means that you have to ultimately end B. 
There's limited utility. There's only flashbangs here for males. There's no disruptive utility, uh, such as a smoke, such as a molly. So Tyloo can breach, and they're being contacted in. It. Silence is everything, but it's Yinfat that's deafening. Instead, he finds one. Exertion stuck between two angles. It's Advan that opens up another kill. Shiri and Torji are rotated in just in the nick of time. With Torji providing Overwatch from the heavens, it's Shui that can slink down in towards the waters. A three on two. This looks good for Mouse. Torji's still holding this left angle as well, so they can't cross on that side. But Kaze waiting for this pick up the body. Oh, no, still finds the headshot. Perfect from Kaze. Torji able to catch Advent on the reswing. It's all onto Kaze. Orp has rotated around the short. There's no smoke. Nothing to deny the vision, but Torji's Orp on the other side. A Sentinel locking it down. He finds his third on the retake. Mouse on to five. That's better from Mouse because you get the opening kill. You see that Exertion was flirting with the idea of pushing Monster for information, but backs off. Just as that smoke fades. Mouse gained all the information. Ty Lu have not put any pressure anywhere in the middle of the map bar that short control. There was nothing in connector. There was nothing over towards long. And where you don't spread your resources over the map, you can't spread Mouse thin. And they're able to rotate. This is what happens when Torji Shuhei are already in positions to fight back B. It goes a lot better for them because they're primed and ready, despite the lack of utility. Kaze takes a lick as he runs through the incendiary. Exertion on a boost as well, being supported by flashes. Buy's not bad for Tyloo. They've got to keep their momentum. Whoop. Oh. Oh dear. Almost finds one. I say at least for Tyloo, they're, they're able to find their way into these bomb sites. In that round, considering it's a four on five. They did breach the defense. Zershin goes looking. Mercury on the other side, not ready for that swing. Oh, he's found a double up. Zershin locking down this side of the map. He's been a monster. 10 for 5. That's going to funnel Tyloo up to towards the AWP of Torji. With Brolin by his side. What a time in as well. The player in Connector just narrowly misses Exertion. He starts to look up towards the top side of it when Exertion goes in towards the water. And now you're struggling. There's one flash and maybe one AWP. One player to get you back into this round. Or pet's head goes in favor of Ty Lu. Roland calls all over Shui to support. And again, it's a one for one. Shui, though, locks it down with a double. And that should be enough. 15 seconds. Yam Yam can't even get into the side. Pick up the AWP and save it. That's the objective. If it can be allowed. Jimmy's probably going to hear him. And is ready to lock down this avenue. You know, Jam Young gets the kill. It should be right to save onto this. The mouse will get in their six on the board. Slowly creeping closer to winning out this half. That's a taste of their own medicine there for Ty Lu. That's Mouse playing their own game back at them. Just a dry double swing out long. That's the last thing Ty Lu are expecting, especially off a normally regimented Mouse. But this is now Exertion getting confident. The Mouse players starting to feel a little bit more like they can win out these fights. This double swing is ludicrous, and it just works out in favor. The fact that one player immediately gets eviscerated, and the fact that Shui can step in and find a double, just neutralizes numbers. It's time a different setup. Mao's taking a lot more of a line you'd typically expect from them. Players in short, players in connector. There aren't these heavy leans. And Tai Lu have got to try and create a number of solutions to the ever-posing problem that Mao's are growing in confidence, and Mao's are growing in the amount of map control and real estate they own. Yeah, the, the one caveat to that is A has continued to be left open. Uh, Brolin is connector, so he's keeping a, a relative eye over towards uh, party, but there's definitely a lot of space being given by Mouse this side of the map. We've not really seen much fountain aggression outside of like a single round when they had a four player lean towards A. Tyloo have acknowledged this time after time with these maneuvers towards long. Boost up for the AWP. That really is the most potent weapon outside of the Tech 9 from Jam Young. 
rotation will come up towards A as the clock hits about that 30 second mark and they've got double in short. So have all the players here, or two at least, as Torji slips in. Shue with the AK at close range should be in the perfect position to shut them down. Though the flashbang is good. And they're able to scale. Torji supporting with the AWP. Looking to deny this bomb going down. It's Kaze towards Log. Spotted out and Torji with the triple. Make sure that there's no bomb being planted on A. Yeah, that's honestly a shame that the Tyloo go into, they run that sort of round with, with only pistols. The, the You see the flash time is working out perfectly. One that goes forward on towards truck and it blocks off players if they were had aggressed towards toilets. The second one completely rattles Shuey. He's still able to hold on. The, the scaling, the entry path in is, is not quite complete here for Tyloo. But you are seeing what they've been working on. Has been impressive to see some of the stuff they are bringing to the table, but Mauser now leveling up round on round, feeling a lot more confident. Final round of play here in the first half, something to be considered is the fact that Kaze Advent are only on Tech 9s. There's limited utility yet again for Tai Lu. Whilst this looked close in the opening sort of skirmishes, suddenly we're in a position where Mauser can end the half 8-4. Torji's in the right spot as well. Also off monster as they start to peer. Flashbang is good. A lot of damage done. Torji looking to step through. First is his. Run down my Mercury. An advantage for Tyloo temporarily. Flashbang is good. Mercury continuing to scale. He is in retrograde. Opening up this B bomb site time and time again. That might set Tyloo up for a fifth Zershin and Brolin. Retaking from the same position, a boost in towards heaven as well. Tyler, have this post plant locked down. Oh, it's so Brolin's going to be set up by the exertion flash. Great start. Cars a close range with the orb has to win his fight and does. Nades caught out. Advent converts. It's Tyloo that's still that round away. They get five on their T side of overpass. Pros, Heaven is a pesky location to deal with when attacking the B bomb site. Let's look at an easy smoke you can throw to smoke it off. To throw the smoke, wedge yourself into this corner. Aim in between these two posts where the wall meets with the floor. Then jump throw the smoke. Simple as that. The benefit to the jump throw here is that the smoke will bloom a bit earlier than a normal throw. Good luck taking B. Oh, okay. Touch and go for a few moments yeah, there. Yeah, there's a couple of these moments there. Pretty solid utility uses from Fury as well to be able to get themselves on towards the side. The bomb goes down and they well, should guarantee themselves another buy. Yuri can drop. I don't speak any Mandarin, so I can't tell you. Well, that's not true. Ni Hao and Cheshire. Yeah, that's, that's pretty all you need. All With some kind eyes and an open heart. That's the way to do it. Kind eyes, open heart. 
but I'll tell you one thing, Lynn Vision, they're a man to win it to win it. It's one hell of a way back up. Chung, don't do that again, Alex. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was on the list of Cheng do's and Cheng don'ts, wasn't it, before we got here? It was. Oh, I like that. That really set the tone of the situation. It did. Lin Vision staring up at the castle, the mountain that they have to climb. Five more rounds. Whew. Can they take this ancient best of one against Fury in the opening stages of IEM Chengdu 2024 to overtime? Or will they fall right here and now? Oh, fallen. Miles able to recover at the tail end, although Tyler get that final round, which gives him something to work with. It feels like five on the T side. It's it can be enough if they can get this pistol round going. Uh, it can be, but at the same time, look, Luke, so I'm going to level with you. It's so much easier when you're a new team to kind of have these strats on T side. It's a lot easier to kind of practice them and get experience kind of, sort of in scrims as well. Playing against a team like Maus, a very strong, obviously, competitor in Europe. Now on, on the T side, you're going to have to react in real time. You're going to have to be able to rotate effectively. This is where the real challenge, in my opinion, begins for Tylo. Let's see if they can step up to the plate. So you have Maus grouping. That's three out towards Long. Kaze is keeping an eye on this position. With players everywhere, that, that I guess they're holding for a response after this bomb is spotted, which it will be by Kaze. Good damage on the Shue. He's able to fall off. And Mal's wait to see, are Tyler going to push short? Are they going to push Connector? Nothing so far. In fact, there's a flashbang being set up for a long peak. Mal's are hunting. Zershin takes a look, but they're not committing yet. It's actually quite nice. Torji going to get the contact, and this will keep these players on A, at least for the time being. So Mao's about to execute onto the B bomb site. Advent ZTR line in wait. There's a smoke as well that can be deployed. But Mao's there going to try and breach the gates immediately. Advent waiting patiently with the dual Berettas. Nice shot on the first. Wouldn't need more, though. At least ZTR steps in for the first. Bomb can be planted. A three on four advantage, Tai Lu. Jim Fat trying to fight forward, knowing that they need to find this initial kill. Get the space while the smoke's still up, and he's able to find it. They come out through the smoke, but it doesn't matter for Jimmy. Eventually, is run down, leaves it onto the IGL. Mercury low, falling to his death. And it leaves it onto Jam Young around the pillar, but he can't get past you. Eight. Wins out the oh. 1v2 with the world helping him for one. No, Mercury. <laughs> Oh, it was right there for Tai Lu. They had the player advantage. They waited so patiently. This shot from Advent was sick. The push through the heaven smoke. They're taking all the initiative. And then Mercury doesn't land in the water and completely gives the round over to Maus. Uh, a great clutch. Oh, we didn't get to see it. Shuhei, but at the same time, that is one of the worst ways to lose that pistol. Oh, my God. Bad trombone. Wow, wow, wow. Well, it happens. <laughs> I mean, they still would, he still was very low. Shui was still in a, in a reasonable position to win the 1v2. Brolin is an MP7 yeah. user. Check that out. Nerd style. That's pretty cool. Maybe he's just taking incentive from Bit, who was using the MP5 at the Major. He's like, alright, let me try and... If you, had, if you had the MP5 or the Mac-10 or a Galil or an AK, he gets a kill though. No, don't, don't, don't put that on him. Close corner. Oh, is... Mercury! Oh, he's gone into long. This is scary. No, it's fine. Oh, yeah, it's the fine. Exertion is here. Yeah, it's all good. In the hood for Maus as they just wheel it up. And skid all the way onto the A bomb site. In fact, we'll, we'll get a dink onto his teammate, but that's fine. They don't mind at all. Everything's being cleaned up. Everything is okay. Mao's got up to nine, and they start to create this gap, which makes the scoreline psychologically feel a lot more further away than it was. Yeah, absolutely. 
At least that recovered MP7 got a got a kill at the end, so you know, that's something. Friendly little dink spraying through the smoke. Mal's survived the test against the USPs. Kaze AWP immediately out. Had the bonus round for Mal's coming through. Nope, that smoke did extinguish the molly. That was an interaction. She was close. Mac 10 in hand. Oh, the DR was playing with utility. Kaze does get his kill and he's still present with this AWP. So that's going to slow down Shuei, forces him backwards. Yes. That's interesting, he just didn't go around the corner on it. He had a, he had a Mac 10. Uh, although he upgraded, uh, at the same time, I feel like Shuhei would have definitely taken that fight. And at the same time, Tai Lu have got this setup. Three players lean A. They put a lot of reliability on Kazakh to lock down B. But guess what? Their setup is absolutely perfect. Oh, this is about to be a brawl in the bathrooms. The smoke, Torji gets the kill, but Xiao Young lines them up. Mercury there to support. Zershin tries to slip in for one, but I'm not expecting Xiao Young to be there. Leaves on to Shu Eight. He's going to run back down, and he does have an open B bomb site. Smoke over the top to heaven. He's got the space to work with. Molotov as well. So, bomb plant for sure. Another clutch for the IGL presents itself, and this one would be crippling for Tyler. Bomb goes down. HE blows the smoke in heaven, and Kaze will use that opportunity to pluck Shui from above. Tai Lu will get on the board on this CT side. Full respect to Tai Lu for thinking. Uh, as soon as Kaze isn't challenged by Monster, Tai Lu know, well, hang on a second, this might not be the full commitment. So they remain resolute in their setup. That the three players that were over at Toilet, and um, it really catches Mao's unawares. It's Jam Young that gets the first two kills. The kill comes through long. There isn't Jam Young in the feed. You expect that to be communicated over, but in the moment, things can get quite tricky. Full credit to Tai Lu for remaining diligent in this setup and understanding that the pressure wasn't felt immediately after cars i got that opener in short that leaves males a little bit hamstrung they've got the orc sure there, there's an ak on jimmy but roland's on a mac 10 exertions on a deagle like this is a real assortment of weapons it feels like males always have an orb <laughs> it just yeah how they've always got an orb it's almost like vp of man management of economy the way they're able to bring it out constantly on the city side, they were able to save it multiple times. The torch has always been given his weapon of choice. Surprised he hasn't featured more in the feed. He's got to be the player in this round that really opens up the this A bomb site. Such long sight lines on overpass. In fact, you can see he's crouched just a little bit just in case Torji wanted a boost. They're trying to give him options, trying to give him every single opportunity to crack open the skulls of one of these Tai Lu players, make them doubt. Make them remember that there's always an AWP ever present in this server. Kaze, was the barrel spotted? No, but the head certainly was on the jump. A good re-smoke, perfectly timed by Tyloo as Mercury walks in. He wants to stick around it. There are a lot of bodies on the other side, Mercury. He's the one that looks to walk through the smoke. This time wins the first duel, but Jim Fat quick on the trade. Kaze, they know this AWP was present. He jump spotted. He might be in trouble though. A push out from the smoke would end his life. Shue is ready to swing with the AWP fire and you just know he's coming, not even needed. Torji wins out that duel, a swing through his advent's end. 2v4, they're still sticking around. Jam Young is present. Looking to sit on the other side of this smoke, maybe catch a timing as it fades. Get that first kill, the trade is fast though, and it always feels like that's the extra element that Mao's have another player always ready for that swing. Good decision as well by Mouse. There's been a number of these rounds in which they, they get space, they even find an opening kill, and then they reset back to the other bomb site. This time, Tai Lu, they got the rotation and the read correct. They just weren't ready for the sheer amount of players that were going to burst onto the scene here for Mouse. And the fact that Torji hits this shot is everything because it unlocks just the fact that Shuhei can delay this timing out long. He can then be that extra element that can backstab and sideswipe Tai Lu. 
They weren't ready for it. And that completely breaks the money. Shuhei knows it. He wants to get involved. He wants to farm up some cash. Instead, he goes straight into the USPs and they found three kills immediately. This is completely not what Mao's expected. Now, Yimfat's not ready for connector. Good adjustments. Would need to find even further damage, but the bomb's been dropped. Roland remains and suddenly, Tai Lu have won a full USP round. Yeah, to be fair, there was a flashbang and I think Advent really is the MVP of that round. That flashbang forward was perfect. Everyone was blind. That's the round previous. Here we go, Mercury, USP. Jam Young out from Long. Advent getting all the assists. Jim Fat tries as a fourth, but he also gets dinked. It's, this is going to be insane if that's the moment, if that's the round that gets Tyler on their feet uh, and sends them into the at least the, the winning moments of this round, this uh, this map. Because Mal's are now forced into this one where there's a Galil as the best weapon. And they can be reset very easily. Tyler bring this to within one round of play. If they're able just to close this out. There's no AWP this time. As you mentioned, Mao's have been given space. I actually really like the fact that Tyloo are playing discipline. They're not playing these close quarters angles. They're remaining with a lot of trust and belief in their setups. They're playing these long range engagements. As soon as I say that though, Jamion creeps close with the AK, which is scary, but at least Kaze is here to support. They want this toilet's control because they want information. Where on earth are Mao's? Mercury's also going to come up. Kaze's all ready for first contact. Oh, the dink from the Galil. Not enough to get the kill. He is low. But Jam Yang steps in. Oh, it's perfect. Headshot, headshot, headshot. Shuei about to walk through the smoke or at least try and catch it on the fade. Mercury's so aware. That will be eight. As you mentioned, Mal's now will be forced onto pistols. I have my doubts that they can do what Tyler did to them. I was really scared at this setup, especially when Kaze gets dinked by Torji. But Jamion remains. He's that guy. Has, has been for Tyler so dependably over the last few months. Highest rated player on this team by a country mile, especially with new additions step into the forefront. It's Jamion that remains consistent. He's giving Tyloo everything in a BO1 bracket in which you take a look on the face of it, it doesn't look like there's potential for any upsets. It's 9Z that tried to set the pace against G2, but it could be Tyloo in our second BO1 that could be silencing Maus. Winner of this will be up against the winner of Furial Envision. I think that map has concluded. If you have another look on the A stream. Mouse have again grouped up towards A. Similar story to their CT side, where a lot of space has been given over. I don't think she was spotted on that little walk yeah, they towards the know. corner. So he could be an issue. Yeah, there he is, trying to activate. If you had anything but a Glock, could have been scary. Roland's Glock is a little bit scary, gets one. Jam Young. Distinct, but all is good. Torje trying to get cheeky with it, but can't find anything. And so it will be a run for that one round game. Yeah, this is the, the power of strong starts. It, it It's really funny, actually, because Torji, there does interview before this match went live. Uh, we, we saw it in the break screen, and he said, look, if there's one thing he could change to CS2, it's the economy because you lose the pistol, you lose a four spy, suddenly the first gun round doesn't go your way and you're five zero down. Whilst it's not happened in the same manner, you can draw a lot of parallels. Mouths have been without money. They've been without bomb plants. They've not been able to make it onto the site. And as a consequence, they haven't really been able to have a foothold in this game. It's been Tyloo with the superior weaponry the entire time. Bar that USP round in which they won, of course. But it always feels like Ty Lu have had control when it comes to the financials. So Mao's now start to sweat. Last time out being called as well. 
No aught for Torji. And that's one thing that has been prevalent in these buys. And he's trying to construct something here. And it might begin in Connector. And it also might begin with Kaze peeking aggressively. Shuhei jumps, doesn't see him. Kaze not going to overextend. Jam Young gets the control in short. So they have space on that side of the map. Kaze has been having a good map, to be fair. And considering he was one of those players on the chopping block, but like Lyrics was going to be potentially a permanent replacement. Maybe that's giving Kaze a little bit of incentive. A bit of extra fire. Knowing that all these maps that Tyloo play are potentially auditions to be part of the main squad going forward. Oh, hello. They're on opposite sides. Tiny bit of cement separating them. Kaze's orb giving a bit of coverage to Mercury's back. Funnily enough, Torchy's orb is also holding bathrooms on the other side. So it's almost like a chess, chess match where they've both played the same opening move. This is better from Mouse, though, because they've got control. They've had it in towards short, in towards connector. Mercury spots the shadow and is able to collect the kill. Mouse need to trade it, but the flashbangs, they're overwhelming from the A-bomb site. Finally, Brolin will reveal himself and the player out long doesn't lock in the AWP kill. 15 seconds left. Mouse dropped the utility. There's a way to close out this round by planting the bomb. And that's an important one as well. But ZTR steps in and he drops it. And Brolin was that connector hold. He was that lurk. And now there's no time to get involved. ZTR runs through the utility and saves Ty Lu, equalizing the scoreline. What a hold from Ty Lu on A. Time becomes a serious issue for Mouse, but Mercury gets that first kill, takes time to trade him out. He gets the dink onto Brolin, who's brought down incredibly low. You see that back, that first kill as he's given the opportunity. I thought when Brolin got this follow-up kill on the player coming up yeah, connected, that that was going to be the round. Jam Young yeah, so comes I. back on through, though, and then DR, the young gun. How about to say his name too much? This is his audition for the team as well, basically. First real big official we're seeing from him outside of some ECL games. And he steps up in the most crucial moment to get double digits for Ty Lu. And that's the perfect time for Ty Lu to get chaotic. That's the perfect time for them to disrespect utility to push through and try and support. You can see why ZTR has done it as well, because Jam Young has already made that aggressive play. He wants to try and be the hero and have that moment. ZTR just steps in, backs up. They know they need to try and deny the bomb because the pathway through the retake would have been a lot more difficult once Brolin reduced the numbers and gets rid of that flank. There's still smiles on Mouse. But they should start to have a cause for concern. They're going to try and one step. Brolin's got the AK. ZDR now has to be tested once again. This time, can't quite find success. Run down by the Tech 9. Advents in towards water, spraying wildly. Jim that with a double with the pistol has opened up the side. Torji holding for the rotations and it's through the chaos. The mouths will prevail. Kaze can't get involved. The pace change. Puts Tyloo in their pace, place. I don't know why we haven't seen this more often out of Mouse. Not the pace change, but just an execute. They've been so resolute in the amount of defaults they've been running. They've never tested Tyloo basically one on one. They've never tested their setups. They've not gone to try and find openings on these bomb sites. It's always been cool, calm, collected. It almost feels like the hand is forced in a way to make an aggressive move like this. But this should inspire Mouse. This should give them some confidence and to say, okay, finally we pull out an execute off spawn, off rip. Maybe they should sprinkle some more of those in because it looks really effective. Great entries with the Tech 9 as well. Evan gets a little overwhelmed, you can see he's. Buffing his lines a little bit there. Tyloo scramble to respond. Good news is Tyloo have plenty of cash thanks to this slew of rounds that they have established. Getting aggressive at Tyloo. Mercury all the way in the playground. 
And he's getting overwhelmed. He's still able to find one before he falls even a second. They can't deal with Mercury. Playtime's over. But at least Jim Fat will step in and find Kaze. That's a big kill. The equalizing frag gives Maus a way back into this. Jam Young taking space in connector, hoping to hear rotations or at least cut them off. Maus are aware. Tyler, we're going to have to scramble numbers up towards this A bomb site. And it all hinges on when Jam Young decides to make his move. When is he going to come up through the connector and start the flank? You imagine if he goes up the ladder right now, he goes B because there's no one there for Tyloo whatsoever. The longer this round goes on, the more doubt creeps into the mind of Tyloo. They need to take some info. Z ZDR needs to be the player that swings long, but if he does, he goes straight into the Orpatorji. Smoke. If he drops it now, they're going to be ahead of it. No need to respect it, but they line up and ZDR gets the second kill. Torji required to clutch. Blows the smoke. But it re-establishes and he can't quite make his way through. He's going to be saving this orb. Ty Lu are going to tie things up. 20 seconds left. Yeah, no way for Torji. No way, surely. This is given something, but time's such an issue. He can't even really pick up the bomb, so... Definitely going to be fading out of this one. And this round... All starts and hinges will hold up. No, Torji whips the shot, can't go off the time. That would be devastating. If he falls now, that would be almost impossible to recover from, but he survives just about. Big sigh of relief for Torji, but remember, Mao's got no more timeouts. The only way they get 30 seconds to breathe is Tai Lu call one off the back of it. What a push by Mercury. The one round... Where Tai Lu shows signs of their former self is the round that delivers a double entry. It gets equalized back immediately. I thought it would be ZTR that would swing to try and get intel. Instead, they just delay with the smokes. They have a good understanding that it's going to be that A bomb site. Or they'll have strength in numbers for the retake. Run boost over. That's pretty cool to see. Uh. Thought she knows it, though. Yeah, it didn't quite do what they were hoping. That's a good counter as well, by the way. Brolin tucking under the Barrel of the Crims position in short water. Tyloo have thrown that flash every single time they've been going to take short. And it's always come with a player walking through connector. So Brolin punishes for the opener. Good way to get things started. Tyloo's whole gang meets in the rotation point. Zeal is going to join up on the B-bomb site. Triple lean towards A. Mal's looking for the B finish. Which means it's going to have to be a retake for Tyloo. And honestly, they, they can't go for it. So Kaze would need to get a multi if Tyloo wants to come into this round. And that's a good start. Bomb. That's the bomb dropped in the open. They need to recover it. Kaze is still a threat from this position. Bomb is picked up. And a flashbang forward is perfect. Flash. Zershin, what a kill. And that's given them this bomb site, the bomb plant. And that point, Tyloo can't go for this retake. They need these guns into the next round. Yeah, that one kill completely stops that retake effort. Really good initiative by Mouse. Just the decision making in the heat of the moment to flash forward that AWPA. An exertion to catch him because that does two things. It obviously gets rid of the sniper, but also it gives space beyond the bomb site for Maus because they were confined. They felt very constricted in that area. And Tyloo rotating over at Heaven, over at CT, would have been able to punch upon them from the different elevations. They needed an outlet. They got it through exertion. And they got it from denying the AWP. Torture will go down with the ship, but it doesn't matter. Maus need one more round to close this map, or Tai Lu will force OT. Got to remember the path that Tai Lu are on to get us here as well, right? It started with that pistol win. Running them down with USPs. Oh, but now we've got Kaze with a scout. No armor even behind it. So it's going to be Jam, Young, and Mercury. They're the two that have been stepping up for this squad so far, and they're the two that have to continue. And it's a swing through for Mercury. Brolin has no time to respond. 
getting aggressive. Disrupting defaults. That's Tyloo. And that's a necessary opener. Torji. Hoping that Tyloo will re-aggress, but he should be worried about what's in front of him. Monster Smoke's about to fade, and Tyloo might face this. This is going to be a head-on collision in towards Monster, and it's one that Exertion already feels the brunt of. ZDR on the angle. Oh, but it's Jinfat yet again. He is everywhere on this B-bomb site, doubling down. Torji will spot the leg. It's a way in for Maus. It feels like they've done enough. Losing the opener, but still able to fight through. Insertion felled. It looked like it was maybe going to be all falling apart for Mal's, but Chimfat has given them a lifeline. Has been an absolute god on this map for them. 25 kills and counting. Mercury is going to try and flank. Jam Young's the one with the kits, so they have time to work with. Mercury spots out Ty uh, Torji, gets a bit of spam. Tyloo grouping for the retake. Jim Fat felled. The HT gets one back. Shu with his, and it's all onto Mercury. Swaps to the AK, but Torchy's off is there. And Mal's will close 13 11. Yeah, sigh of relief for Mal's. I mean, that is a one way to close out the game, but definitely not in the manner they expected. They needed Yim Fat to survive. They needed Yim Fat to step up for them. Because whilst it did look like everyone was up there when it came to the kill count,